there have been in my personal life a couple of developments that came to me in, in strange ways and that at the time <laughs> I just didn't know <clears throat> excuse me what it was that was happening to me exactly and there are two specific things and both of them led me to develop um, therapeutic processes and I'll do the more recent one first meaning the experience that was first closest in time was in 1990 when I had uh, begun my Qigong practice standing Qigong that I was learning from a Chinese gentleman who didn't speak much English at all just enough to get by and I had been in a relationship with a woman the relationship ended there was a big knot in my stomach and I'm in the class and the class is simply where you stand for 30 minutes an hour silently breathing and just releasing and aligning with the earth's energies and all. And suddenly it's like a little voice, a little prompt ask your spirit to show you the core of the pattern. You know, what's that? Okay, sure. I mean it was just like literally I'm talking to myself. The next thing I knew for the next 15 minutes or so, maybe 20, I don't know because time was very strange at that moment, I'm reliving my relationship to my father mother, not my sister, not one of my wives, nothing like that, not a girlfriend. It's my childhood into my teen and later years with my father. And the emotions connected to that. And suddenly I understood the meaning of seeing red. I was experiencing murderous rage inside me, fiery anger. And I'm here. externally, this. Internally, bombs are going off, literally. And it's very curious because I'm observing it while I'm feeling it. And all this stuff is swirling around and I'm just breathing like I do when I do my practice and I'm with it. And then my eyes are closed through the whole thing. Heat is just radiating out of me. 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is later, suddenly it's all done. And I go, what was that about? What difference did that make? And I kind of hear, think about your father again. Go, oh yeah, my dad. Could, yeah, he was a good guy. He did the best he could. He had his stuff, and I, I was so neutral, and I felt good towards him. Because consciously, now I was just in this place of appreciating him, which I had a lot in my life. I didn't, I wasn't aware so much of that other energy that was trapped in me, which I wasn't feeling anymore, which was strange. And then I go, oh, wow, what's that? It was like, now think about Jan again, okay? Yeah, nice girl. What was my problem with her? I'm going, what the heck just happened? Literally, I'm going. So I, I slept on that one, and in the morning I came back for the class again. I would come just about every morning. I think certainly every weekday, drop my daughter to school, come to class. Venice, California, not too far from the beach. And I would pick something that was an issue for me or something unresolved, something that I wanted to kind of provoke in myself to see what I could do with it. So, I'd stand, and I couldn't explain any of this to my teacher because, you know, I wouldn't even try. So I'm standing there and I take something and I bring it up inside of me to see, and, and I'd have things that would start, they'd have a charge and I'd notice they also were in my body somewhere. So I would feed them. I would, like, throw in paper into a fire and wood and kindling. I would keep pushing on them to see what they were and what they would provoking me without trying to defend against them or analyze or anything, just the experience and the curiosity. Where is this? What is it? How does it feel? And if something came up where I would shift my attention to anything in me that was uncomfortable with dealing with, well, I, this whole process just would move systematically step by step. And I did this for two weeks, I remember. And I felt with it, that, gee, I think I got something here. There was a woman in the class who was a psychotherapist, I think, or a social worker therapist. And she was taking Qigong class. And I asked her, and I said, I, I've got something I'd like to try. Would you be willing to do a process I created? Make that story a little shorter. She said, yes, we did it. She gave me this testimonial. I've got it written on my website somewhere. Oh, this is a breakthrough in mind-body technology. This was the first real, uh, 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 you know, everybody today is into mindfulness. They think, well, we're, I'm doing mindfulness almost 30 years ago with people. And then I got another therapist I knew. And then I, th I saw something about an opportunity to teach 
at a weekend retreat, come and bring, you have a class you want to teach? I decided to bring a class there, and that was interesting. I'll tell you why. Um, since you've asked about this, I go to this weekend, it's down in this overall San Diego area, up in the hills, mountains, somewhere, I forget what it's called exactly. But I'm there and I start to talk to this woman. We end up talking to each other and she's very charming and I'm starting to just kind of, you know, the lights are going on. And I get up to go do something and as I'm taking a walk, a little voice in my head says, same pattern. And I went, oh, wow. She was, she was a Scorpio too, my other girlfriend was a Scorpio. And I thought, wait a minute, I'm about to do the same thing all over again. So I started to look at, for the rest of that weekend, I never saw her again. I wasn't trying to not see her, but the more I focused on, I, I taught my little workshop too. We've got a bunch of people. I, th um, I think, I'm trying to think of that. No, that isn't where I did the film of it, but I did this whole group process because you don't have to tell the facilitator what you're going through. You never have to talk about it. You do it. And your own inner wisdom is your guide. It's, it's pretty cool, I think, the way it's set up. So, but that was for me so startling because it was like, oh yeah, I'm about to do that again. No, I'm not. And it, it was just like I realized, well, I don't have to do that. I never saw her again. Never saw her again. So I thought that's kind of interesting the way that pattern had me, you know, fix it, so to speak. So there's other things I can say. I had a from the one session that I'd like to talk about is that I put up a flyer, I was posting it up at Whole Foods, which wasn't called that at the time, and in different places, and I get a phone call from this guy, and he's an older guy, you can tell, and uh, this is about 1991 or so. The guy says, uh, I saw your flyer, do you, do you work with hip problems? I said, no, I don't know. I said, you could come and try it if you want. I'd worked already with somebody who had a whiplash. I just walked them through the process and by the time they were done, they turned off their collar and I said, well, that's gone. I said, okay, whatever you did, you know, you, you did your whiplash. I didn't do it. So this guy, there's a knock on the door. We set up a session. The guy comes, knocks on the door, and I open the door and here's this guy. You know, I'm not very tall. This guy's like six foot two, six foot four, whatever. So it's like I'm looking up at him. Older guy, kind of ramrod straight, and he's looking down, going, uh, you're, you know, I, so we're going back and forth with questions and answers. I can tell this guy's reticent. And finally, he steps in. So I'll get through this quickly. So, so yeah, hip problem, like I said, look, here's how it works. I like to do the standing to start. If you don't like to stand, we do it sitting, lying down. But this will kind of make it very present, very immediate. And he said, oh, sure, I'll stand. I said, fine. I wanted to be careful. This guy was already up in his 70s. He told me, I don't know, 78, Korean War vet, something like that. So we're doing this, and just a few minutes into it, no more than 10 minutes, can I sit down? I said, oh, yeah, sure. I don't want this guy to keel over. Sits down, and I have this couch there. He sits in the middle of the couch, stretches. He's like a condor, one of those big birds, sprawls out, takes up the whole thing. He's sitting back there, just kicking back. I said, are you okay? He says, I'm fine. I said, well, how's this thing with your hip? He says, my hip. I go, what do you mean? He says, it's my mother. I never knew she didn't love me until now. <laughs> I didn't laugh, but I left when I talked. I go, I said, okay. It, is there something? I put something saying, knew she didn't love me to now. Now I get it. Makes sense. He's kind of, you know, doing his own thing. What do I owe you? <laughs> that was it. And I thought, wow, here's this guy, couldn't be more removed from whatever kooky, you know, kind of consciousness that he might think I'm in. He's looking down. He said to me at the door, you know, you don't have a white coat or anything. You're not a you know, he was really a little perturbed that I wasn't fitting the picture. But this guy, he did it for himself because Basically, I tell people in the beginning, here's this little like affirmation, you're turning it over, you know, to your own inner guide and all, and okay, fine. And he just blew through that whole thing. You know, some people go to therapy for decades, they don't know what's going on. This guy, 10 minutes, you got, it's my mother, she didn't love me, that's why my life is screwed up or whatever. And man, I'll, I'll never forget that guy, I can see him right now. Uh, it was something. So that's... I had a, a, before him there was a woman who came to do this, one of the first people who came to do it was this nice woman, 
And when she was done, she said, you know what you should call this? I said, what? Standing in Spirit. I said, okay, that sounds good to me. That's how it got the title. You know, it's not exactly an accurate title, but that's how I got the title, Standing in Spirit. So it stuck. And then I had other interesting people that came. There was a woman who was a therapist who had had a super traumatic experience. It was a woman I knew, never knew what had happened to her. I mentioned this to her one day. Do you want to do this? No, nah, it's okay. A month later, she said, I'd like to do that process. It turns out that we do this in her apartment, which is like a shoebox. We're standing a foot and a half away from each other. Eyes are closed. We go through this. It turns out the woman does a process. Her eyes are tears are real. She'd been raped by a guru that she'd studied with. I never knew. Which I, I just and I said, "Wow, you just went through this whole thing, standing with your eyes closed next to a guy you don't know all that well, and you trusted yourself enough to get through this." Jeez, I'm blown away. She said, oh, "Yeah, this was good." So I did this with a lot of people, uh, and that was already in 1990, 91. But there's something that precedes that that I'm really working with now. I've got a DVD on this. People can order the DVDs on their website, and I think the first part is kind of a short presentation on the Meyer case, and then there's a group that was there, and because, you know, I had sent this information to Billy, and on, the, you know, on this DVD, it, which shows me working with a group of people, and I said, look, Billy, if this isn't compatible with um, my work with the mission, then let's... You know, I'll put it on another website. He said, no, no, do this every time you get a chance, every lecture. It will help people with the spiritual teaching. Oh, okay. So that was how this, you know, came about that it is on my website.